It's nothing but a consecration, an anniversary, a celebration of that momentous event. And that's what Laylatul Qadr means. Laylatul Qadr is the night of destiny, the night that the history of the world changed when Allah revealed His Kalam on the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was such a powerful event. Allah said, Inna Amzalnaahu Fi Laylatul Qadr Wa Ma Atarakum Al Laylatul Qadr how what would we know what Laylatul Qadr is? Even today, we can't imagine and we can't fully estimate the significance of this event and this night. We have all sorts of ideas, but we can't truly appreciate the significance of Laylatul Qadr, which is the significance of Allah's Qur'an, the Kalam, which came down to humanity. So let us reflect for a few moments on that great blessing of Qur'an. This is the month of Qur'an, this is the night of Qur'an. And the Quran is the greatest gift of Allah to humanity. He didn't leave us alone. He could have. But He gave us a beautiful reminder and guidance. And it's so powerful word that they can change the world. And they did change the world. And they can continue to change the world. Unfortunately, the way we approach the Quran has changed significantly. Now we reduce it to a book. The only book in the world that we read, but we don't understand it. There is no other book we do this to. Not the books in our schools, science books, textbooks, mathematics, even books of hadith or other books. Uh, any book you pick up in the world, any around the world, in any language, people pick up the book to read it, to understand it. But somehow the Muslim develop this tradition of reading this book and not understanding it. If that is not an insult to the Quran, then what is it? You know, it's a different issue that you don't understand Arabic. But this idea that developed in the Muslim tradition that we need to read this book and not understand it, or Allah deconstructs that idea. So coming back to the Quran, what does Allah say about Ramadan? Ramadan Then he describes the Quran with three characteristics. So if you're thinking this is a book that we cannot understand, Allah says, Nas. This book, what makes it special? It's guidance for all people. Some of us in our mind we have, well, only the scholars can understand it. Only a select few can understand it, so leave it to them. Allah says, nas, all humanity, guidance for all humanity. And then some of us think, well, it's very difficult to understand. So Allah followed that up by saying, well, thank you, nothing, you know, that. First of all, guidance for all people. Second, it's very clear guidance. He's reminding us this is clear guidance. Allah made it crystal clear, it's easy to understand. Well, Allah says this verse, repeats it in the surah, that we have made this easy to reflect and understand who is going to take up this challenge. So this is And then some people might think, well, okay, guidance, but it's ritual, it has nothing to do with our life. The third characteristic is Al-Qur'an. It is guidance that shows you the way, tells you what to do, tells you right from wrong. So this is a beautiful, eloquent description of the Quran. Udalli nas, guidance for all human beings. Bayinatu minal Buddha, very clear guidance. Wal Quran, guidance that shows you right from wrong, practical guidance. So then let there be no mistake, that's Allah's message. This book, the significance of this book is its meaning and its message. It's nothing else. It's not the, the word or the sound of the word that we have made it out to. Where you recite a melody that has its own place. But the real significance of the Quran and the month of Ramadan later of the Qadr is the message of the Quran, the guidance of the Quran. So this is what we need to revive somehow our tradition, our society we went um, in a different direction, unfortunately. So many, there are many people in our Ummah that don't care to understand the Quran for various reasons. And that's really a disrespect and a tragedy of the Quran. And you will never find this idea in the Quran itself or in the early Muslim community. There was no sense of reciting the Quran without meaning. In fact, you know, today we have this tradition of only people who are reciters. And the one reciter, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al As, he was someone who had amazing energy. He's someone who memorized a thousand hadith of the Prophet. And he used to recite Quran, he, he did so many things. 
He wanted to pass all the time. But on the Quran, his story is, he came to the Prophet he asked him, how quickly can I read the Quran? He come out from his Quran. In how many days can I finish the Quran? The Prophet said, take you one month. Read the Quran over one month. And he said, well, I can do a lot more than that. He was very young. He, had, he said, I have more energy than that. So the Prophet said, okay, you're signing in one week. And he said, I have more energy than that. So the Prophet said, okay, you're signing in five days. And then he said, he has even more energy than that. And then finally the Prophet said, okay, you're signing in three days. He didn't recite the whole Quran in three days. And then you know what he said? He said, I have more energy than that. I can do it quicker than that. The Prophet said, no. What did he say? He said, la yastahu man fara'a fi aqalla min salat. Do not do that. Why? Because the one who recites the Quran in less than three days does not understand it, cannot understand it. It's meant to be understood. This is the message of the belief. This Quran is so significant, it can change history. It can change nations. The Prophet said, Inna Allah yarfa'u bihada al-kitabi aqwama wa yabara bihi aqareen. This book is so powerful, it can raise nations and it can lower other nations. It can change the destiny of nations. And it did change people of nations. The story behind this hadith is very interesting. I'll end with that. The way this hadith was narrated from Umar ibn al-Khattab. One day Umar was a khalifa. He was traveling. And he went to a region called Aslan. So Umar ibn al-Khalifa, the capital was in Medina. So he met his governor from Makkah. His name was Nasser ibn al Khalid. So he met him. He Omar was traveling to this region away from Mecca and Medina. So in the city he meets the governor, the one he had appointed in charge of Mecca. And he asked him, who did you leave in charge of Mecca? And after his governor said to him, Ibn Abza. I left someone by the name of Ibn Abza. Omar was surprised. He said, well, not Ibn Abza. He said, who is this Ibn Abza? I've never heard of him. Then uh, after he said, Mawla ibn Wahina. He said he's one of our freed slaves. Omar was very surprised. He said, you left a freed slave in charge of the holy city of Islam, Mecca. In charge, politically in charge, the mayor of Mecca. Can you imagine? Omar wasn't displeased. He was just, the sense was, how did you manage to pull that off? That was a very different society. What was the answer of Nafiq? He said, he said, well, this former slave of ours, he knows the Qur'an the best of us. Among all of us, he's the most learned in the Qur'an. And he also knows the Qur'an, the rules of inheritance, and the rules of faith. So because he knows the Qur'an the best, we put him in charge of the city. Omar was so pleased. And he was reminded of this statement, Every hadith is basically a memory that was revived in the mind of a companion and they narrated it in real time. Omar said, you know what? I heard the Prophet Sallallahu say one day, in Allah yarfar bihazim kitab al-Quwaman wa yarfar bihi al-Qadim. So he shared that story, that hadith with everyone. That um, the Prophet said that Allah will raise some nations through this book and he will lower other nations through this book. And Omar said, I believe Ibn Abza is one of those people that Allah raised, a former slave who came from a social background that was nothing in that society. Because of his understanding of Quran, he was elevated and became the mayor of the holiest city of Islam. This is what we achieved through the Quran 1400 something years ago. Our country today, our world is still struggling with minorities, still struggling to bring people who are former slaves and for the first time in American history, we had a black president. That was unprecedented in 2008. So we did in America in 2008 what uh, Muslims did 1,400 years ago. And we still didn't do it perfectly. People were dealing with the aftermath of that today. So my brother and sister, in conclusion, this Quran is such an amazing book. This Quran, we need to approach it differently. We need to read it like we read every other book. We need to understand its message and its guidance. It's not hard. Allah reminds us. It is guidance. It's clear to understand. It's for everyone. And it's practical guidance. 
May Allah enable us to revive the Quran in our lives and be a Taqa Tilawa, the way it should be read and recited, not in the way that many of us choose to recite. May Allah bless all of you, give us the Layla to Qadr, may Allah accept all of our prayers, may Allah alleviate the suffering of everyone around the world who is struggling, may Allah lift this pandemic and make the situation easier. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. Jazakumul Khair, Dr. Bizaid, we really appreciate you coming and give us that. Very, very quickly, the point that Dr. Bizaid was making. Remember when the Quran came to the Prophet that society was utterly bankrupt. Remember, you had a Persian Empire and you had a Roman Empire. That was a powerful superpower at that time. The Arabs were Trump, there was no law, there were no regulations, they were still circumambulating the power and naked, they feel that their clothes was luscious, and so they can illegal take their clothes off to circumambulate the cattle. You can imagine the conquerors pass them by and not even think about it. And the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the Quran, and within 23 years, the Quran has changed and conquered so many different lands. Jewry kind of Allah, the one. Islam spread like wildfire all the way to China, to India, to Spain, and then see the the response is that. The thing is that when the Quran, you know, and this is the thing that when we drink from this, the few spring of the Quran, it quenched that 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 thirst of giving the dawah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a very sincere mind. And this can change ourselves. All of, all of us here can change in that way of understanding the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making it part of our lives. So the Quran has to be a relevant part of our life because it is like our hand. It is our hand, it's a manual way to lead us to lead the world, to lead the dunya. And we see that when, when, when we a Muslim Ummah, they just start not looking towards the Quran and they give up doing that, what happened? Then we were, we were taken over. And we have seen that all over in Islamic history, what has happened. And so this is a lesson for all of us, a night like tonight, it is a celebration of the Quran and one of the odd nights. It is the anniversary where we allow the Quran to, to resonate, to where we can make a, you know, a factor and reflect on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what it means to us, how we can allow that to change our lives, how we can be passionate about the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how the Quran can really change our, our community, uh, change a society like the Arab world at that time that was so backward that they were even carrying it with their children. Right? And the mass civilization of the Roman and Persians, and Allah sent that revelation to that type of people. You may ask the question why? Why would Allah choose to send it to a, a society like that when we already had civilizations about them? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly what he was doing at that time. This is what, when this people come into this game, they took it, you know, by, by force in the sense of making that, uh, that Islam within them to, to be recognized and to allow that to be a motivating factor. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran to be a motivating factor for us. That we can allow, allow ourselves to change also with the Quran. And don't allow the Quran just to be a book that is sit there and you don't really look at it. We are also not better as all of us and we do protect this family. Just that we're okay. Shall we do the other four